All right, so the question was asked by Rainbow Rocks 1234. Uh, what happens if, essentially, what happens if absolute values are related to zero? So um, the question was a little bit more focused than that, but I, I thought I'd expand it out just for a minute to show you all the situations in which an absolute value interacts with zero. It's a great question. I don't know why I didn't cover it. I guess because I was just not thinking about it, but I was only thinking about negatives in my other uh, presentation on absolute value inequality special cases. But this is like a super special case, so it is what it is. Anyway, uh, the the first thing we have to understand is that an absolute value is either equal to zero or it's greater than zero. It can't be less than zero because absolute value is a measure of essentially distance without direction. You can't go negative distances, you can go different directions and that's it. But you can do nothing which is zero, so it's possible. So in the first situation I have an absolute value of 5x plus 10 greater than or equal to zero. Well that meets all the criteria for uh, an absolute value, so no matter what I plug in it's going to give me an answer that is either greater than or equal to zero because it's an absolute value. So in this situation, my answer is just all real numbers. So if you see a situation with that absolute value that shows it's both greater than or equal to zero and meets that perfect definition, you put all real numbers. In the next type, you have an absolute value that is just greater than zero, but not equal to. So it's most of the definition, or it meets most of the criteria that we need to put all real numbers up there, but not all of it. But since it's so close, we're going to go ahead and put all real numbers. But as a little caveat, we're going to put except right here. Because there has to be a situation that I can plug in a value for x, and it will give me zero. But this inequality defines the answer uh, set or the solution set to be numbers that don't give me zero because it has to be greater than or equal to. So what I'm going to do to find my one exception is just set 2x plus 5 equal to zero. And I'm going to find out what I would have to plug in to give me something that doesn't work. So end up with x is equal to negative 5 over 2. And what that means is, essentially, if I plugged in negative 5 over 2 in for x here, I'd do 2 times negative 5 over 2 plus 5. It would end up giving me an equation that looks like 0 is greater than 0. Well, that's not true, so that can't be the answer. So that's the one situation where I create an exception for myself. So all real numbers except negative 5 over 2 or except x is equal to negative 5 over 2. Either way that you write it is probably acceptable but sometimes they like to see it that way. Anyway, if you have an inequality that is greater than 0, it's all real numbers will work except for the one time when uh, you plug it in and it gives you 0. So just solve for 0 there. Tack it on as an exception to your all real numbers and you're ready to roll. Now, what happens in the less than and less than or equal to situations? Now we know that an absolute value has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's their only choices. This inequality asks us to think about the idea of can I make an inequality or can I make an absolute value that's less than zero? No. There's no situation I can plug in a number here that's going to give me um, an actual solution. So my answer in this case is no solution because the tiniest number uh, that I would plug in, even if I did something that would make this side zero. The best I could hope for is zero is less than zero, which is not true. We talked about that a second ago. Anything else will give me a negative number, so that's going to be, uh, will give me a positive number, I'm sorry, because the absolute value itself has to be positive, so it will never work. So this is a no solution situation. Almost over explained, and I started making mistakes, so I jumped out of that one really quickly. But if it says that it's just less than, no solution. Now the last type says what happens if uh, is it possible to get an answer when an absolute value is less than or equal to zero? Well going back to our original idea that absolute values have to be greater than or equal to zero, the answer to the question is yes. Now the majority of answers will not work because they will always give you something that is less than zero. The only time that you can get something that actually works is when it equals zero. So what we're going to do to find our, our one answer is set it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 9, 3x minus 9, I'm going to divide by 3. So the only possible time that it works is when x is equal to 3, and you can plug that back in. Negative uh, 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 9. Gives me an absolute value of 0. 
which is just zero, which does meet the criteria of being less than or equal to zero because of that right there. So the only answer choice when you have an absolute value less than or equal to zero is when you have a number that you're going to plug in that gives you a zero to match it. So if you have a grandiose idea of one or the, if it has to be one or the other. So in this case, uh, as a quick review, if it's greater than or equal to, that's all real numbers because it meets all the criteria that you need. If it's greater than zero, you have to say, yeah, it's all real numbers except that one time when it equals zero because the inequality defines it. The next one, what happens if it's less than zero? It's just no solution. It can't be less than zero. It's impossible. And the last one would be if the absolute value is less than or equal to zero, it's pretty much no solution except for there is one solution which will give you zero which matches up our definition, so to speak, of absolute value. So I hope this video was helpful and it covered everything you needed to do and I didn't ramble too much. So good luck.